Well, just a little bit of backstory. How did I decide where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do? Over the last couple of years, I've been watching different YouTube channels and people online, and they were talking about their different experiences and the places that they had seen. And every time that somebody mentioned something that really piqued my interest, I would then drop a pin. As you can see by this map, there's a lot of pins all over the place. Well, the pins themselves started to form clusters. And when I had enough clusters around a certain area, I knew that I could plan a route around those pins. After that, it was just a matter of finding the time, packing the bike and hitting the road. On this particular tour, I did not want to take a heavy laden bike around all of these twisties. So I decided to find a campsite as a central spot and then do a day trip around all of the different pins that I had on my bucket list. As with this trip, I was fighting a few different factors. I had rain on my tail, so I was watching the radar app to find where the most downfall would be and where the least downfall would be. I then chose my route or chose a place that I was heading for, typed in the word camping into Google Maps, and from the list of choices, I found um, the campsites that I was looking for. If I didn't like the area I was driving through at the time, I would move on to the next one. So I did not pre-book anything and I always found a place to stay. Quite a friendly little one. It's quite close. I can move and he doesn't even get scared away. We're heading off now to do that uh, motorcycle route that I was having interested in for years. Drive through slowly, see what it's like, and then we'll head on to the open road. fun here just looking at the biker greeting this is something that is quite common all over the world um, here in Europe we drive on the right hand side of the road so our clutch hand can be used for giving our greeting and we usually then two fingers pointing at the road uh, indicating rubber side down guys which is sort of like the good luck keep the rubber side or keep your wheels on the road in uh, England where you are using the right left hand side of the road and then you would have your throttle on that side to give the greetings so then here comes along the foot greeting which is taking your foot off the pegs as you will see on this this chap that passes me now So this was a day trip, a round trip. It was 134 kilometers and took me on average then the five hours. It took many a good old pit stop just to check out the scenery and just to enjoy the peace and quiet. Yeah, well, boys and their toys.
was unplanned. So coming up now, you're going to see a lot of the twisties that I went through. See quite a bit of the scenery that I saw. Um, scroll ahead, um, scrub through to the parts that you find interesting and um, slow it down and look and enjoy with me. fair amount of traffic on the roads but not as much as what there would have been had the weather been much better and had I been in season but even then it was a great time to be on the roads with the bikes
just a heads up, in the next video I'm going to be heading on from the Dolomites over to the Austrian side and going over Gross Glockner. There is quite a difference between the two, the Dolomites and Gross Glockner, and I must say my heart has been lost to the Italian side. I do definitely like the Dolomites much more. come to the end of this video just be way out there on the road guys not everybody's watching out for you and road works they can be a little bit tricky when you look at all that loose gravel so keep the rubber side down and have a great trip